Hello, viewers. It is so nice to see you again. As always, there is so much I can tell you about Morag, and I will. But first, I want to point out that she is our second recent guest to have started in the financial field. She's also worked in telecom and other industries, but I just personally find it interesting whenever anyone moves away from finance. Hmm. Morag is currently the founder and CEO of SkyTeam, a leadership development company that she launched in 2007 and has gone on to support more than 15,000 leaders from 20 countries and on four continents. She is an uber accomplished leadership coach and author of four books, and she is a contributing writer to entrepreneur.com, ceo.com, and the American Management Association. Aside from her many, many accomplishments and just being an awesome person, I love her because of something off the wall that I can really relate to she might just have an unhealthy addiction to law and order. I mean, who doesn't these days? I should mention one more thing because it's vital. She is the author of several books, as I mentioned. And today I want to talk about a best-selling book she wrote a couple of years ago, Cultivate the Power of Winning Relationships and the Future Proof Workplace. And we will, of course, talk about her upcoming book, you, me, we. Morag, welcome to Know Your Worth and Command Your Value. It's so great to have you with us today. Jolene, I'm so excited for our conversation. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I always like to get started and some of us really just like this question, but I think it's an important one is tell us about yourself. What's your origin story? And you can start anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be at birth. <laughs> uh, if yes. we're feeling mischievous, I'll say I'm from a small town just east of Texas, but originally grew up <laughs> in England. And so my origin yes. story is that playing in the fields, falling out of trees, getting into mischief and roaming wild in the, the fields around the village that I grew up in. And then in high school, I, ch I was going to be an engineer. So before there was even ah. finance, there was going to be engineering of some flavor. And I studied oh physics, applied mathematics and economics. So I'm a pretty logical thinker. I love to know mm -hmm. how things work. I'll take stuff apart. I used to do jigsaw puzzles mm -hmm. upside down. That's not me, the picture oh. side down because ah. of the spatial awareness. Oh, that's in, really interesting. That's a whole other uh, conversation in and of itself. Interesting or weird, but as, <laughs> as you highlighted there, I actually ended up going into finance because in that economics class, there was a chapter on how banks create money. And I thought, this is fascinating. Uh -huh. And Very I spent cool. 15 years in finance, but in fact, it was nothing like that chapter in, in economics. But I loved it. <laughs> I loved work. I got to work with some amazing companies and leaders and lending millions of pounds to help them to realize their business dreams. And that's kind of the potted history that got me to where I am today. Yeah, so how do you go from finance to coaching, to leadership coaching and leadership development? Oh. I know there were steps along the way, but how, how does one go from there to there? Well, that goes back to the analytical brain because, of course, all these business leaders would come and see me with these fabulous cash flow forecasts. They'd all hold up their widget. We're going to get rich on unicorn chopsticks. And then not all of them made it. And as I looked at why, it wasn't because the idea wasn't smart. It was invariably because those leaders hadn't invested in as much care and attention in how business gets done. So the relationships, the trust, the psychological safety, the clarification of roles, responsibilities and decision making that happens in every team, company mm -hmm. and an organization. Mm -hmm. and so that's what pivoted me into focusing on that side and was also the genesis for both my books, but certainly for Cultivate the Power of Winning Relationships. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about your book for a minute. Um, I do want to get to your new book, but your previous book, Cultivate, seems like it was almost like ahead of its time. You know, when you think now people are really thinking about, you know, the future of work, how do you future proof the workplace, et cetera. Tell us about that book and, and how that came about, because the, the timing is really incredible. 
So what's lovely about Cultivate is it's been a lifelong learning for me in terms of the value that I bring to my clients and the value that I bring. Because it wasn't just ahead of its time, it is very pertinent for its time today. And the reason I wrote it was I had recognized that in helping many of my clients, IT technology engineering leaders, to mm -hmm. invest in their relationships, they needed a language and framework for thinking about this soft, fluffy stuff right. in a very pragmatic right. way. Mm -hmm. And so I designed, uh, for those who are watching, but for those who are listening in the book, you'll discover what I call the relationship ecosystem, which okay. are four relationship dynamics. Allies, your best friend at work, who has mm -hmm. your back, not just on the good days, but the tough days, who will right. give you a kick in the pants when you need it, and the tough <laughs> love. Um, supporters who are like fair weather friends, you know, cheerleaders, yay, go mm -hmm. Charlene, but when you put out the call for help, crickets. Right. Rivals, they're the ones who are saying, you know, if it suits me, I'll help you. If I don't, I'm against you. The ones who might have been trying to trip you up in their advice mm -hmm. for the event that we were discussing. And then adversaries, where it's just tough. Every right. time you come together, you feel like you're butting heads. Mm -hmm. And so Cultivate helps provide the language and framework for thinking about who are my critical stakeholders at work and in life, but specifically at work, mm -hmm. and how would I diagnose the health of those relationships? And it has been transformational. I've seen it turn around projects that are behind. I had one company that were three years behind on a product launch, all because of lack of clarity and investment in roles and responsibilities, turn it around and get everything back on track within six months. I've seen it transform toxic organizational cultures too. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. Now, how do you, um, uh, you know, without going into a long discussion and, and telling us all about your book, because we actually want people to buy the book and read it. But, you know, I've spent a lot of my time, my entire career when I was in corporate um, working with uh, with engineers and particularly mm -hmm. um, engineering leaders who were leaders because they were good engineers, not because they were good leaders of people. And if there's one thing that I saw pretty consistently across the board is the difficulty, almost sometimes impossibility to get them to focus on communications and see that connection as being important. So mm -hmm. how did you get that across in your business and you know, and obviously through your book? So that challenge of being promoted because you're a good technical expert, I think infects every career path and every industry. Mm -hmm. But it is one mm -hmm. of the biggest mind shifts to realize that success is a team sport. You cannot, even in a solopreneur, you've, you and I have seen it as solopreneurs. Mm -hmm. Our businesses are only as successful as the strength of the relationships, not just with our clients and alumni, but with each other. Right. And right. so helping those first line leaders or senior leaders to get it mm -hmm. is something that I am passionate about. And in uh -huh. fact, I have a tool and a resource that your, your listeners can adapt right now, because whilst Cultivate is a powerful guidebook. It mm -hmm. will help you diagnose the health of your relationships and are they allies or not. What you, right. me, we will do, and the ally mindset profile, is it mm -hmm. tells me how do I need to show up in order to be the best version of me, right. not a doormat, but the mm -hmm. best version of me and be curious about and help you to be the best version of you so we can be better together. Right. And so in the show notes, there'll be the URL, which is skyteam.cloud forward slash Charlene. And it will take you, <laughs> you straight saying? to the Ally Mindset profile. But that's how it's being thoughtful about looking up and saying what's working, what's not. Choosing how am I going to show up today? Do I need to be more talkative or more listening? Do I need to be more assertive or more collaborative? And then stepping up and actually doing it. Right, right. And how do, how do people, how do you get people to keep themselves accountable for, oh, those, well, for those right behaviors? Am I asking comes, you for all your secrets today? No, no, no. <laughs> but it all comes back. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Those questions are so powerful because the answer is through the power of our relationships ah. and thinking about who can be your accountability buddy. 
So whether it's yourself and at the end of the day thinking about what worked, what didn't, did I show up as my best? And if I didn't, let it go because tomorrow's a whole new day. Right. You get to start again. But ideally, it's finding somebody like you or I have somebody in my network who every Friday we're currently working on learning to say no or at least no, not wow. yet. Mm -hmm. And so each Friday we email each other and cheer each other on on how did you do and hey, here was this special circumstance, how would you have responded so that we're both better prepared to right. say thank you for thinking of us but no, not yet so that we can focus on the important things. So relationships, is, it's the that, answer that is, to everything. Yeah. Wow, that is so great because we do so often need someone to help us feel accountable without mm -hmm. making us feel badly about something mm -hmm. that we that we are or aren't doing. And um, and it's so difficult to hold ourselves accountable. I'm reminded of that as I received my um my renewal for my new membership, which is oh. an app for weight yes. loss, that I fail on a regular basis <laughs> uh, until today. And it's interesting because I'm listening to Michael Bungay Stanley narrate his new book, How to Begin. Yes. And he was talking about slipperiness, you know, as we set oh, our goals. Yes. And like me, I wanted to get fit. I put on a few COVID curves that went the uh -huh. wrong way. Right. And so um, he talks about slipperiness and essentially how we sandbag ourselves. And mm -hmm. so to your point, Having an accountability partner is key. And in fact, that is the capstone of the ally mindset model, that pinwheel that those who are ah. watching can see, which is action and accountability, doing mm -hmm. what we know we should do and having somebody or holding ourselves accountable for actually living what is important for us. Right. And, you know, it's interesting as, as a coach, I coach accountability all of the time. And then I beat myself up because it's like, well, I'm not as accountable as I should be. And then I try to remember, ah, but there's that one thing you're human, right? Mm, and, yes. You know, even Marshall Goldsmith has said he needs someone to help hold him accountable. So who am I to, um, you exactly. know, to think that I might be different? Yeah, and it's interesting as I reflect on my career, one of my biggest learnings was I always, I wore a professional mask for many, many years wow. of I have to have everything under control and give the impression that I, I do it all. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how can I be an effective coach? And again, wow. in the Ally Mindset, we talk about courage and vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And what that has allowed me to do in the last five, ten years most is to start showing the cracks, that I am human, that I have right. fallen and made mistakes, that I'm not consistently perfect. I'm consistently imperfect, but also consistently striving to learn and grow. Right. And I think that's what makes you a powerful coach, Charlene, is the mm -hmm. fact that, yes, you can hold others accountable, but mm -hmm. in holding that mirror up for them, we recognize how we right. can also benefit from our own medicine. Right, right. I recently did an exercise where I uh, did a session with people. And I, when it was over, I was the, I think the third speaker to, you know, tell people how to do different, different things. And so I started my session with, um, I said, okay, so what now, what I said, you've mm -hmm. got all this great information. Now, what are you going to do? So I gave everybody a piece of paper and I said, commit to three things. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to um, seal it in an envelope put your name, your address on it and give it to me. And I'm going to send it to you in three months Yes, and have you read it to hold yourself accountable for what you said you were going to do. So I that love you can that. Stay it. It yeah. reminds me at the end of our leadership programs many years ago, we used to do postcards, a similar thing. Mm -hmm. We drove a special pandemic because everything moved to virtual. So there wasn't the right. same opportunity. Right. But that sort of reminder of, wow, it's been three months already. Right. It doesn't matter if you haven't done anything. I mean, ideally, you'll have done something. Mm -hmm. But that reminder is the best time to start is now. It's right. Like and, planting and of a you, tree. Exactly. And you told yourself you were going to do that. That was kind of the key with that. But I'm getting a little bit off topic. I do want to go back to, okay, so you started, you know, you started your business in 2007. You've had this great success and you've written books. How did you know that that was the thing for you to do. And yet you had the courage to take that leap because that would, you would have been pretty young to have done that. So unless you always had an entrepreneur mindset, I'm just always curious as to how people get there. 
So, it, it, yes and no. So I obviously have an understanding of business because in my finance role, mm -hmm. that's what I was doing is understanding businesses. I've always at the back of my mind thought I would like to run a business at some point. Um, it's varied from being a, a tea room to a mm -hmm. wedding dress shop, a la say yes to the dress. To, uh, <laughs> but I had never really thought about selling me as a product or service or my mm -hmm. team. And um, that was actually fate. And there's two things. I actually reveal the darkest fate story in You, Me, We. It's a 17-year-old story, uh -huh. but still makes me feel sick. It uh -huh. still causes me stress. And the trigger was I left my corporate role to a new corporate role. And on day five, I was invited to leave. Wow. That so was quick. <laughs> that was quick, which my, my husband told me at the time. I said, well, it can't be you because, like, what could you have put? Like, what? Right. However, being British, I mm. was literally taken to my knees. I remember the gut punch. I, even now, it's still there, low grade. Mm -hmm. And I kept it hidden because of the shame, the embarrassment, the stress, the fear. I was the main breadwinner for the family. But... What it did do, because I was already getting phone calls from alumni from past corporate roles to say, mm -hmm. hey, come do what you did there for us here. And mm -hmm. I remember the conversation after we got over the shock of the invitation to leave, a.k.a. I got fired. Right. Um, and my husband and I talking and saying, well, this is what we've saved for. This is the rainy day moment. We'll give it a year and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so I went all in. And gave it a year, and here we are now, 15 years later, right. with a successful, I can't imagine doing anything else, and I get to work with some cool leaders in different organizations, mm -hmm. all struggling with, how do I show up as the best version of myself? How do I help my team to get unstuck? How do I coach and mentor the next generation of leaders so mm -hmm. that they can be successful in the future of work that's right here today in right. this hybrid environment? It's fabulous. That, uh, you know, that's such a great story. And I find increasingly as I talk to uh, successful people who are living in their purpose and more often than not, I'll be quite honest, they're, they're entrepreneurs. And for everyone, there was always some kind of forcing function, yeah. whether they knew at that time or not that there was a forcing function, you know, in, in hindsight or, you know, foresight, mm -hmm. there, um, there certainly is one. You know, one thing, Morag, is I, that I see and when I talk with people is that today more than ever, you know, people still struggle with knowing their worth, you know, especially women, people of difference, but I'm, I'm even starting to see it even more with men. You know, at what point in your career was it when you started your own business or was it at another time where you really would say that I understand my worth? I am still learning it. Okay. So I recognize the value. What I still wrestle with is um, both a speaking that truth loudly like the new book this is not coming out with a whisper mm -hmm. this is coming out screaming and shouting with fanfares and so forth so watch this space october 18 mm -hmm. 2022 it hits the shelves okay cultivate came out with a whisper because i was mm -hmm. terrified of well what if people don't like it being judged i did not rec i understood the value but i was still nervous of the value but right with you and we I'm going mm -hmm. all in. So, and I'm terrified by the idea because it's courage mm -hmm. and vulnerability in action. Certainly when it comes to asking for dollars, you know, when I'm working with new clients, I'm setting my fee structure. Mm -hmm. And when Eric and Ruby joined Sky Team, they're my co-authors for You, Me, mm -hmm. We, they still talk about seeing on my computer screen a post-it note that said, I am worth $5,000 a day. Mm -hmm. Say it. I'm now... Yeah. My value is more than $5,000. I, I would imagine, yes. Um, but even then, it's that mindset of moving from, it, it's hard. And again, mm -hmm. accountability partners help. Um, making right. it transparent and sharing, hey, you can ask for more. The coaches mm -hmm. that I mentor, the businesses that are starting up, who did what I did, which was think small, mm -hmm. I challenged them to think bigger sooner. Right. And I'm still testing the limits of that value that I know I can bring with the mm -hmm. right partnership and with the right client. 
So I want to get to your new book, even though I know it's not coming out for a while. But before I do that, um, you know, the name of the show is Know Your Worth, Command Your Value. So I have to ask you, what advice would you give someone of any age or stage of their career or their life to help them know their worth and then take the needed actions to command their value? So two steps for knowing your worth. Mm -hmm. The next time you step out of the bedroom office or leave work, whatever it is, or leave a life engagement and you are positively glowing with excitement because you were in the zone and just nailed it, you need to pause and capture that thought. And what was it you were doing and who were you doing it for and stuff? Because that's oh, the value. Beautiful. That's the magic that you bring yeah. when you are firing on all cylinders. Yeah. And the second part of getting to the value is asking others, mm -hmm. what value do you gain from our partnership? What three words would you use to describe me when you're thinking about me? What comes to mind? Because that gives you the outside in perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And then knowing your worth, you can then take that and think about the impact, the legacy you're creating and decide how you want to put a value and a worth around it. And it isn't always dollars. But find that moment when you are in flow and glowing because finding a, a role like I have at Sky Team mm -hmm. um, where you can tap into that more often than not, oh, wow, that is a wonderful place to be. Let's talk about your new book because I'm so intrigued. You, me, we. I the, the, the premise of this book, it's the sequel to Cultivate. It complements mm -hmm. it because it talks as to how do we show up as an ally? And Gallup, for example, for more than 20 years have been researching engagement data. And of the Gallup 12 questions, question 10 is, do I have a best friend at work? And it's the one they get the most pushback on. People say mm -hmm. it's too touchy-feely. This is a workplace. No time for friendships. Blah. Well, we're calling BS on it ah. um, because, A, the question I think is wrong. The, mm -hmm. the problem with do I have a best friend at work is it's passive. It allows me to sit back and say, well, no, Charlene dissed me in the last meeting. She didn't mm -hmm. do this. So, no, I don't. And so what we're saying in You, Me, We is if you want to have a best friend at work, you need to be a best friend at work. You need to show mm -hmm. up as a friend to your colleagues. And again, not as a doormat, not as a yes person, but as a mm -hmm. yes with guardrails. And so what we do is we explain that ally mindset. How do you show up with abundance and generosity? Mm -hmm. How do you then build on that and create relationships where there's kind of connection and compassion, where we can meet each other where we're at? Right. Because once we have that, courage and vulnerability for creativity and innovation, taking informed risk, it comes naturally. Right. Candor and debate for feedback and unearthing the barriers to success for the business and for each of us will happen at the right time versus the gotcha mm -hmm. afterwards. Right. And then that leads to action and accountability where we individually and collectively, you, me, and therefore we mm -hmm. can succeed and be better together. In corporate, it was always kind of a mindset of, you know, what's mine is mine and mm -hmm. what's yours is potentially mine. Yes. Right. Right. And that is the antithesis of relationships and, mm -hmm. you know, and being in it together. Yeah. Right? So and that's I, it. Right. You've just described rival and adversary behavior mm -hmm. and supporter is I don't even know what you have and I don't care because I'm getting just enough on my own. But right. if you think about it, all of the politics, silos and turf wars in a company are slowing down information, decreasing decision quality, ultimately undermining success for the company and for the leaders involved. It is the right. ultimate team sport. And yeah. you can't, you literally cannot be successful in business and or life unless you successfully cultivate winning relationships and show up as an ally with that ally mindset that is inclusive versus right. exclusive. Oh my, what else should we know about you and your business? The key is have the courage to reach out to the people you admire who may have the answer to the problem you may or may not know you have right. because ultimately it leaves you better than where you were before. So connect with me on LinkedIn check out our company website at skyteam.com. That is so fantastic. And we will put 
uh, your social addresses and your web address and links to it uh, on the site as well when, uh, when this piece comes out. But I can't thank you enough, Morag, for being you, for being on our show, for sharing such great wisdom and uh, and knowledge with us. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Viewers, I hope that you have enjoyed this quick conversation that we've had. I'm so glad that you decided to tune in today. And before I let you go, just in case no one has said this to you today, you are enough.